Hey, today I'm going to spread fertilizer on the corn. This thing's taking quite a bit, more than I like to put in. We obviously have a seal is leaking again. Well, she's a little thirsty. All right, we finally got enough. You notice it's coming out of this hole. So once it starts dripping out of that one, you know you're good. Ah, shoot. The corn's up good. We got a great kill on the cover crop. It's growing like a weed, but thankfully it's not a weed. Thankfully we killed all the weeds. So yeah, gonna spread fertilizer on the corn. What else? We're gonna be spreading uh, 36 feet. So just covering 12 rows at a time. We could go more. This is a Newton Crouch hydraulic spreader buggy and it has paid for itself in no time. We can do variable rate with this. Uh, it can hold up to five tons. We, we, we had an old cross buggy that was wore out. This was definitely a big benefit to the farm getting this and we've had this uh, since 2015. Ow! perfectly in the middle it's best when you can get it to drop right in the middle then you can pile it up drive up makes it a lot easier but i didn't do it this time that's a wrap fertilizer or fertilizer as some people call it is extremely important in the success of a great yielding crop of corn fertilizer is broken down into three micronutrients n p k N is for nitrogen, P is for phosphorus, and K is for potash. NPK! Oh, hey there, I didn't see you. I got the spreader buggy going. We're spreading fertilizer on corn, as I mentioned before. Going 7.1 mile per hour, good speed. Thankfully with GPS, this makes it nice. The tractor drives itself, so really all you need to watch is make sure you're not running over your corn. Make sure your bed chain is running and your spinners are spinning. As long as this fan speed shows around 550 to 600, I know that's spinning. Plus, you can visibly see the corn kind of shake when the uh, fertilizer hits it, so you know you're spreading. And of course, you can always do it the old fashioned way and get out of the tractor. Who wants to do that, right? Get out of the tractor and make sure you see fertilizer on the ground. Another great thing about these newer tractors, and this by no means is a new tractor, this is a 2007 8430, is you can adjust how fast you want to go and set it. So right now I'm running 1,670 RPMs, and I can throw my throttle all the way forward and that's all it's going to go because I can set that. The old tractors, the 4960s that I grew up on, the 4760s, you had to just kind of find that sweet spot. Whereas this one, you can set your RPMs, throw it wide open, you're there every time. Also, you can adjust your hydraulic oil pressure inside the cab. You ain't got to get out and turn your little uh, rabbit to turtle, little aggravating little clip tab, whatever you call it, whatever you call it. And then GPS, gosh, GPS made, made everything so much easier. But a bad thing, it's made us, a lot of us lazy because uh, you don't want to drive the tractor. It's nice to drive it every now and then. Well, that's not safe. Ouch. It's time to fill up the spreader buggy again. I can get usually around 22 acres. Really just depends how much fertilizer you're putting out. I'm putting out roughly you know, a little over 400, 440, somewhere around there. Time to fill up. A little dirty. If you ever really wanted to know what the bass sounds like when the bass drops, it sounds like this. It's called the Raven and what it does it controls the spreader buggy so we can put our product density in this we put our swath width which is how far we're skipping put how many pounds per acre we want to put out all that stuff goes in there as long as you've got those numbers and you figure them out and you've got it nailed Rigatone. falling off that would have been terrible would have fell straight onto the spinners and probably chopped up into a million pieces that's a wrap got it spread tenders empty 41,459 pounds that's the weight of fertilizer that was in this tender dump all that 
into the spreader buggy and then from the spreader buggy you take that to the field and spread that along the field don't you just love it when you have one sprinkler that's messed up hey that was pretty easy got lucky on that one oh geez that was a long walk oh that was fun you gonna let your crabs go yeah okay Goodbye. Yeah, it's probably best. I don't think they live home. Uh-oh. There's a Florida turkey out there. Hey, Randy Joe, what is it? Turn left to tighten or turn right? I can't remember. I think it's turn left. Hey, is it red positive or is it black? Key Feast Corner. We should ask Key Feast Corner. I think red's positive. Key Feast Corner. Start right now. What we're doing here, you see you have an irrigation pivot. I mean, this is about a seven tower. A few of the things that gets overlooked on the pivots is the gearboxes. Your gearboxes, that's what your tires and wheels mount to. And what happens, the seals get bad with them over age. Water infiltrates through the seal where the drive shaft goes in, through the top plate. Fills your gearbox full of water, contaminates your oil, it'll look like pudding. Of course, that's no good for your bearings, they start rusting and whatnot, and then eventually your gearbox locks up. We'll go around and there's a drain bolt on the bottom of these babies. The mountain's kind of boogered up because it's probably as old as I am. Water will go to your bottom of your gearbox and the oil float on top. So all you gotta do, crack that bottom plug. And we have water. You do have a little bit of water. Crack that bottom plug and you can see the water dripping out on Kyle's hand. That's pure water right there in that gearbox. Most of the time on these older pivots, it's getting past your seals on your drive shaft. And all that water in there has sunk to the bottom. Get out of that water. Yep, that's pure water coming out of there. All right, what happens now, when you get too much water in a gearbox, in the winter time, and it gets below 32 degrees outside, that water will... Ah, ah. Kyle, you just made a EPA hazard. We'll have to clean that up. Gooey, anyway, gooey. Anyhow, driven a little bit of that water out of them every year is good preventive maintenance. That keeps your oil from going, getting contaminated. It keeps your bearings from rusting. You know, if you got a lot of water in there, you got one the seals are bad or a bearing already going bad in. So about time to replace it, which we've already replaced it several this year. Replaced it, did. What did I say? Replaced it? Did, I say replaced it, did, didn't I? He broke it in my nose. He broke it anyway. <laughs> we'll take the cap off and fill it up. We also could do the same thing on our center drive. Ugh. Caramel pudding. Like or pudding. what do you call that? Diarrhea is what you call it. <laughs> ah, Lord have mercy. It didn't really have much oil in it to speak of. I think most of it's been drained out. So many gnats. We are working on a cultivator kmc six row cultivator from 1975 i believe it's been rebuilt probably seven times and jeff what have we got going on here this is the third time i've had this one basket off so the first time bad baron bad baron second time old flange come apart again and now we believe we've hit something boom right there jeff hit a rock yeah probably me and now it broke the flange so back at it fixing it again man Never get that lucky. Never. What was that, two hits? Two hits. Wow. When you're good, you're good, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Gotta know the exact amount of force to hit it. Tell you what, if we didn't have gnats in Florida, it would be so much more enjoyable working outside, wouldn't it? It would. Malone is probably the world capital of gnats. Lakely, Georgia is. I don't know. From Talkway. Let's get your size, huh? Mine's catching. We got another strap. I'll just strap it up. If you want to hold it, I'll go grab it. We're about a quarter inch off, but Paul Bunyan here is going to straighten it out for us. Do it again. Careful not to get it. Careful not to get it. There. He's so strong. Perfect. Jeff don't know his own strength. We call him the Paul Bunyan of the farm. The diesel semi. The power wagon. The locomotive. The Clydesdale. Yeah. Super important where your seatbelt. Always. I mean, that's the first thing I do is 
buckle up. Definitely, definitely, every time.